What's up, Wayne Baron here with darkfix.net, and we are going to be working with Windows 2003 Server. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to show you uh, how to set up your DNS. This is if you have DNS already installed. I've got another video that shows how to make your computer a domain controller and set up DNS. So you can go watch that video to set up DNS. But DNS uh, servers should automatically be set up on your regular default servers. Uh, so hopefully everything should be going right. Whenever you load your system, you should see manage your server. It should have your DNS server right here. And so, but uh, you can either access it here or come to start administrative tools and choose DNS here. Um, I need to register the computer sometime or another. Anyway, if you do not have your setup like this, which I've got everything on uh, links like so at drop down menu. So if you don't have it like that, you come over here to your taskbar, right click, choose properties, go to start menu, click customize. I got mine set for small icons, choose advanced, and set everything for display as menu. But to access your system administrator tools, it's right here. Display on all program menus and start menu. And that way you can come over here, access your DNS from here. Okay, so what we're going to do is that we're going to create a domain. So right click on your uh, computer name right here and choose new zone. Click on next, make it a primary, click on next, forward lookup zone or reverse lookup zone. Right now we're just going to do forward lookup zone, click on next, and this is mydomain.com. Click on next, and this is going to be create a new file with the with this file name mydomain.com.dns, and uh, or you if you have an existing, you need to choose to use the existing file. Click on next, and then do not allow dynamic updates, or uh, this option is available only as Active Directory integrated zones, and so we're just going to choose do not allow dynamic updates, and click next, and then click finish. Now let's come down here and click on my domain. These are the two uh, folders that are, that are given to us. So let's say that you have um, some NS records. Uh, NS records are name server records. Uh, usually they attach to your IP address, your external IP address. So we're basically going to design this from the ground up as if you was going to be hosting websites and hosting mail. And so um, if your IP address, we're, we're just going to make up an IP address. So we're going to uh, choose our start of authority, SOA. Then we're going to come over here to our name servers. And then this right here is going to show the default. And do not remove your default. Leave that one as is. Click on add. And then we're going to have ns1.mydomain.com. And then we're going to go 192.168.2.9. And we're going to click on add. Okay, and so th this right here is for internal. So if you had an external IP address, now if you're going to be running your websites so the whole world can see it, then this right here is going to be your IP address of your external IP address. Whatever your IP address is would be right here and not your internal. This is my internal. So we're going to click on cancel and then click apply and click OK. And it's automatically going to add in our NS record right here. Okay, so now the next thing that we want to do is that we want to add in a record for our MX. So we right click, come down here to other new records, scroll down and choose MX. Create record. Okay, for your MX record, uh, you're going to set, let's say that, that you want it to where uh, it's going to come to here, but it's going to do something else. Let's say it's going to come to mail. Okay, so it's going to be mail.mydomain.com. And then your full domain is going to be, your fully qualified domain is going to be this right here. So then you click on OK, and then done. And so now that right there is your, uh, your MX record for mail.mydomain.com okay and so that is for your mail so what we're going to do is we're going to create an SPF record this helps with your mail delivery system so what you do is that you right click and you choose other new record scroll all the way down to the bottom and choose text 
create record. And now what we're going to do is that we're going to type in the following. V equals SPF1 AMX PTR MX colon my domain whoops domain.com dash all okay so this right here is going to pick up on all of your amx ptr mx records for everything click on ok and oops, close so now this right here is set so this right here should work with uh, uh, your aols your hotmails and so forth however you do have to send in a message to AOL, allow your domain to send mail to them and vice versa. However, I will post a link in the description if I can find it on how to set yourself up with AOL because a lot of people still use AOL. It's still a primary email address for a lot of major companies out there. So anyway, that right there is for your mail. So now we are going to go in for our A records. Our A records are mainly used for creating uh, subs. So you come over here, you choose A. If you leave it blank, uh, if you leave it blank, then it's automatically going to use the parent domain, which is domain.com. So we add that. Uh, the host record domain.com was successfully created. You can also do www, and that will add that in for www.mydomain.com. Click on Add Host. That's really getting on my nerves. Click on Add Host, and it's going to say it's created that one successfully. You can also do FTP. Add that one in. Add Host. Um, mail. Add Host. And whatever else that you want to add in to where sites can access you. And... Anyway, all of these right here have got to be changed to 9, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, close out. Click on this one. Change it to 9. Okay. Okay, so that right there has your A record set up. Okay, this is how you basically set up your DNS. There's a lot more stuff that you can do within your DNS, but this is just the basics. This is what I've got on mine, and it seems to work without any problems. And so now you got to give 24 to 48 hours for your DNS to take effect in the global. However, remember, like I said, this right here is just for testing. So this 192.168.2.9, you do not want to use your internal IP address here. All this right here is for your external. So you would put in your external IP address. I'm just not putting in mine because, well, security issues. But you can go in and, and run tests and do whatever you want to do. But use your external IP address, whichever one that was given to you by your ISP, your internet service provider. So that is the ending of part one. All right. So that uh, wraps up the DNS part of it. And on part two, we will be looking at saving our DNS exporting it out and then importing it back in. Okay, so we'll see you in the next one. Wayne Baron here with darkfix.net. Bye bye.